suggested uh, that if we can answer this question, we can skip the dialogue and do something else. <laughs> yeah. And, um, Marty said it's well known that anything in a paperback should be easy to understand and get. Someone left a tape recorder a couple of weeks ago, and whoever, if you wake up to the fact that they lost one, I have it. <laughs> For a small fee, a cup of coffee, oh, I might return it. <laughs> it's yours? Is it silver? Oh, yeah. a little fancy one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank goodness they're smaller. Ah, let me change it because this is too easy. You want to go first, John? Okay. Which one do you want to take first? Mm. Do it again. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. Let's see, on what particular issue can this be? On what particular issue can this be demonstrated or determined? Uh, the issue. Hold it. Yeah. One particular issue would be fear. Yeah. Oh. Right. Either. We go that far and say welcome. And the other? The other does not. Uh, would not would not consider practicing um, dying or death. You mean? Uh, Wait. Oh, the fear. Oh, also, there's a yeah, there's a big difference about it. Um, virtues between the philosopher and the non-philosopher, which would include bravery.
Um, let's do one more thing here. Just not, <clears throat> just not any non-philosophy, or they miss the whole dialogue. They're both true. Okay, I just thought I'd waste some time before we got into the dialogue. Is that fair, Drew? Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't be fair, fair. to waste time. And if any of you well, disagree? I think it would be fair. Okay. I mean, you to waste time before we get Yeah. I mean, I don't know how to quite decide that. I want to become a relativist. <laughs> if you You're going to become a relativist? Why? <laughs> Hold fast to it, though. That's the goal, even if only a night. <laughs> well, I want to be a true non-philosopher and say, if you want to waste your time, it's up to you. And that neither are wasting <laughs> their time. Why is that? Hmm. Thus, they are both religious. <clears throat> That's what makes the dialogue great. So.
tell them, no, no, let's get into some work. Well, wouldn't fear shut down the idea of contemplation? I mean, if, if the true philosopher would not have a fear, he would have a curiosity where fear would not be a part of what he's contemplating. Uh, it would be the fact that it's open-ended would not allow something like fear to uh, enter into the picture. So if we're, if we're questioning fear, then we're questioning a lack of understanding. That either can be supported from the text or it cannot. Mm -hmm. right. Jump in. Um, if they both fear, what? We, the two of us are dissenting over here. They don't both fear. So well, let's not build an argument on their fearing. Let's support either one or the other position from the text, okay? Before we go into flights of rhetoric, pile upon rhetoric. We're in the book. Let's jump. Let's go. Jump. Might as well. Let me finish your thought, please. Well, the only thing that, that I can say is that my own experience indicates that uh, in contemplation of death, I can't imagine anyone who wouldn't be afraid. Oh, okay. I mean, they might lie to themselves, they might do whatever, but, no. you know, as a human being. If they're not afraid, they're foolish. <laughs> well, I guess what I'm just no. saying, no. to me, as a human being, when I look at my own fear of death, I go, oh. Okay. Anybody else, you know, in that line? Yeah, my uncle. Uncle Louie? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad I'm in that line. Ran a pub. <laughs> Okay, where'd we leave off? Yeah, let's, let's read. We finished with the suicide. All right. Right. Because on that suicide, He's making a very vital point. So let, let's pull it out. What's the Stefano's fear? Pardon me, did you? What page? The Stefano's or something. Oh, all right. In my sacred text here, it's 61C. <laughs> okay. And that's not uh, SEA. Yeah. Well, it's 553 is where, where he's talking to uh, the seeds, the seeds, or whatever it yeah. is. And this old one, of course, it's uh, 464. Yeah. Different texts. Yeah. Didn't, didn't we read up to 63? Sir? Didn't we read up to Sephora 63? Well, let's go there then. No, no, no. I think you're quite right. I just oh. had a thought. Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just that one ask. phrase. Let me just read it, then we can go back to where we left off. Mm -hmm. The philosopher would be willing to follow the dying. Okay. Mm -hmm. And since we have readers up here, they sure know where we left off. Sir? What page? Uh, what's the bonus number? 63A. 60. 63A. B. Good place. That's 466. Six. I remember we read through CB's uh, 
I think Council. very well, if we push very well on the top of 466, that's 63B. I would elect that as a good taking off point. Good idea. Good idea. I'll begin. All right. You want to be one of them? I'll begin. All right. Then come on up here and get a chair. Oh. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on. I thought I could just do come it on. from here. Fame comes your way. Yeah, well. Need another reader? Come on up. Very well. Very well. Who's going to be he? Very well. No, no. Are you going to be oh. he or I? Those are the two people in the dialogue, not Socrates. <laughs> oh. Very well, said he. I will try to convince you better than I did my judges. I will, I. Louder, please. I. Precisely. I will try to convince you better than I did my judges. I believe, my dear Simeas and Cebes, that I shall pass over, first of all, to other gods, both wise and good. Secondly, to dead men better than those in this world. And if I did not think so, I should do wrong in not objecting to death. But believing this, be assured that I hope I shall myself in the company of good men, although I would not maintain it for certain, but that I shall pass over to gods who are very good masters. Be assured that if I would maintain for certain anything else of the kind, I would with certainty maintain this. Then for these reasons so far from objecting, I have good hopes that something remains for the dead, as has been the belief for the time immemorial, and something much better for the good than for the bad. Well, do you intend to go away, Socrates, and keep your opinion to yourself, or would you let us share it? Oh, yeah. Um, do you have a book? No, I don't have a rest. I, I think maybe we... Uh... What were the points? I forgot them because oh, okay. my memory is so poor. Oh, that he'll go over and... What? He will pass over to other gods, both wise and good. Thank you. What's the use of the word other? Oh, <laughs> first of all, to other gods, interesting. Yeah, because we have been talking about one, haven't we, up to this point? Apollo? Maybe his friends. So, what are the two points? Pass over to other gods. And? Wise and good. And to dead men better than those in this world. Yeah. Fine. Oh, well, let's hurry up. Fine. Gods then are going to be wise and good. And the men who died are going to be? Better than those in this world. Better than anyone around me. All right. Yep. What do you think about it? Well, I can certainly see why I wouldn't fear death. I'm just wondering why he's hanging on so long. This is what he has to show. Mm -hmm. This is what he has to show. And that's why it's such a poor work. Huh? Because he doesn't show it. Yeah. You can't do that. <laughs> Can he? Well, in this dialogue, that's going to be his goal. So, but I, I'd like to see it. I've seen some hints that it's going in that direction. I mean, it's not not merely Apollo, but wise and good other gods. Hmm. Guys, nuts. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, paperbacks. Couldn't it be, rather than other gods than Apollo, other gods than the gods that are our masters here? Well, wherever you put other, I don't mind. But he, he didn't say Apollo. True, True enough. Mm. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Did you want to wrap up? Uh, I don't, I don't care. If no one minds me reading the lobe, I'll keep reading the lobe. Yeah, well, hey, if you see any major differences, holler out loud. Um, 
that we, we're not going to lose the third point, point in here, are we? If you're okay with that. Yeah, don't move more. What does it say? And they're also good masters. Mm -hmm. One. <coughs> Three. He has to make it clear that that's the case. That's the whole dialogue. Which is why my text ends right at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other God that I looked up the Good, good. Says, by other gods, Socrates means such as are super mundane or of an order superior to the ruling divinities of the world. Or those gods are here signified that are unconnected with God. Yeah, see, he's saying by talking about super mundane. Uh, the only thing in gods, those are the only thing in gods, of which Apollo plays a key role. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Then, do you mean to keep this idea <coughs> to yourself and go away with it, or will you give us a share? This good find seems to be a case of findings is sharings between us. And don't forget you are on your defense to see if you can convince us. Well, I'll try. But first, oh, I think that's you. Oh. So, so, if Cebes and Simeus are representing the true non-philosophers, so now we have a very good example of what he wants, if he is a true non-philosopher. Oh, but first I see Kriton. By the way, what does he want? To be convinced. To be convinced. The language, right? Look, see, this has been, this is the goal. Here it is. Right? And he says, I want to share. What does he want? What does that mean? Participate. He's in the action. <laughs> Some good piece of the action, right? But still curious, like convince. convince, right? Convince. To see if you can convince us. See if you can convince us. A defense. Right. He's setting up what? Uh, and I, go ahead, go ahead, see if you can convince us. Go ahead, give us a share in one, two, three, four. Go ahead, Let's see if you can convince us that this is true. It's almost like money or something, and he just wants a, yeah, so a share. Because he's not saying I want to understand the whole of it, he's saying I want to share it. It's the difficulty with share, if you would ask me about it, is, uh, one of my relatives is very wealthy, and I share in it. Uh, yeah, he left a quarter on the table. So therefore, when I pocketed, I shared in his fortune. Yeah, you have a share of it. Right? A very small share. A share is a share. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was having fun with that word. Yeah. What's the Greek? Share. <laughs> Maybe it's part participation. Maybe it's participation. Uh, let's see. Oh, here it is. Participate. Um, actually, it's metadoyes. Yeah, that's different than <coughs> participate. From uh, metadidomi. 
Okay. Which Let's indicates go. giving. Close to a major point. Oh. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. But first, I see Criton here. Louder. I. But first, I see Criton here has been wanting <coughs> to say something ever so long. Let's ask what it is. Only this, said Crito. The man who is to give you the poison keeps telling me to advise you uh, not to <clears> talk <throat> too much. He says people get hotter by talking, and nothing like that ought to accompany the poison. Otherwise, people who do that often have to take two or three potions. Oh, let him be. He must just be ready to give me two or three if necessary. That's the third, third class in our dialogue. One, two, three. How would you judge Preton? He's not one of the four chains. Come on, what's his concern? His concern is following the law of, of, of the keeper, not rather than listening to what Socrates has to say. You see, you guys are gonna, not even a philosopher. You guys are going to talk and you're going to have to take the poison two or three times? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to mix it up. I mean, he's right with dialogue, isn't he? <laughs> right. Not at all. He's with the jailkeeper. Yeah, he, he's got to be a spokesman. Okay. All right, we push them. Go ahead. Oh, let him be. He must just be ready to give me two or three if necessary. Uh, I guessed as much, but he keeps bothering me. Oh, let him be. Now, then, I want to give the proof at once to you as my judges why I think it likely that one who has spent his life in philosophy should be confident when he is going to die and have good hopes that he will win the greatest blessings in the next world when he is ended. So Simeus and Cebes be my judge. I will try to show how this could be true. He added the fifth, didn't he? Yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Win the greatest blessings? Yes. Right? The fact By is... By the way, okay. I don't know uh, if it matters, but is there a difference between great and greatest? Greatest. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So what's he saying? Greatest. All the way up. <clears throat> for the Off life the of philosophy. Is that right? Okay, go ahead. The fact is, those who tackle philosophy aright are simply and solely practicing dying, practicing death all the time. But nobody sees it. If this is true, then it would surely be unreasonable that they should earnestly do this and nothing else all their lives. Yet when death comes, they should object to what they had been doing so long earnestly practicing. I don't feel like laughing just now, Socrates, but you have made me laugh. I think the many, if they heard that, would say, that's a good one for the philosophers. And other people in my city would heartily agree that philosophers are really suffering from a wish to die. And now they have found them out, that they richly deserve it. Ah, <laughs> that would be true, Simeus. Except the words found out. For they have not found out in what sense the real philosophers wish to die and deserve to die, and what kind of death it is. Let us say goodbye to them and ask ourselves, do we think there is such a thing as death? Certainly. Okay, all the three points. Got them? One, two, three. Got them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wish to die. Don't deserve, lose them. Wish to die. Deserve to die in what kind of death it is what kind of death it is. Therefore, he's starting out by saying, in this game, we can talk about different kinds of death. Mm -hmm. Right? Hmm. Certainly. Is it anything more than the separation of the soul from the body? Death is that the body separates from the soul and remains by itself, apart from the soul. And the soul, separated from the body, exists by itself apart from the body. Is death anything but that? No. That Definition, is. right? No, that is what death is. 
Then consider, my good friend, if you agree with me here, for I think this is the best way to understand the question we are examining. Do you think, do you think it's the part of a philosopher to be earnestly concerned with what are called pleasures, such as these, eating and drinking, for example? Not at all. The pleasures of love, then? Oh, no. Well, do you suppose a man like that regards the other bodily indulgences as precious? getting fine clothes and shoes and other bodily or adornments. Ought he to price them high or low beyond whatever share of them it is absolutely necessary to have? Uh, low, I think, if he is a true philosopher. Then in general, do you think that such a man's concern is not for the body, but as far as he can, he stands aloof from that and turns towards the soul? I do. Then firstly, is it not clear that he that in such things the philosophers, as much as possible, set free the soul from communion with the body more than other men. So it appears. And I suppose, Simeas, it must seem to most men that he who has no pleasure in such things and takes no share in them does not deserve to live. But he is getting pretty close to death if he does not care about pleasures, which he has by means of the body. Quite true indeed. Well then, what about the actual getting of wisdom? Is the body in the way or not? If man takes it with him as companion in the search, I mean, for example, is there any truth for men in their sight and hearing? Or as poets are forever dining into our ears, do we hear nothing and see nothing exactly? Yet if these of our bodily senses are not exact and clear, the others will hardly be for they are all inferior to these, don't you think so? Certainly. Then when does the soul get hold of the truth? For when the body tries to examine anything in company with the body, it is plain that it is deceived by it. Quite true. Then is it not clear that in reasoning, if anywhere, something of the realities becomes visible to it? Yes. And I suppose it reasons best when none of these senses disturbs it, hearing or sight or pain or pleasure indeed, but when it is completely by itself and says goodbye to the body, and so far as possible has no dealings with it, when it reaches out and grasps that which really is. That is true. And is it not then that philosopher's soul chiefly holds the body cheap and escapes from it, while it seeks to be by itself? So it seems. Let us pass on, Simeus. <laughs> Interesting. Do we say there is such a thing as justice by itself or not? We do say so, certainly. Such a thing as the good and of beautiful? Oh. Of course. My bad. No. Such a thing as the good and beautiful? Of course. And did you ever see one of them with your eyes? Never by any other sense of those the body has, did you ever grasp them? I mean, all such things, greatness, health, strength, in short, everything that really is the nature of things, whatever they are. Is it through the body that the real truth is perceived? Or is this better? Whoever of us prepares himself most completely and most exactly to comprehend each thing which he examines would come nearest to knowing each one. Certainly. And would he do that most purely who should approach each with his intelligence alone, not adding sight to intelligence or dragging in any other sense along with reasoning, but using the intelligence uncontaminated alone by itself while he tries to hunt out each essence uncontaminated keeping clear of eyes and ears, and one might say, of the whole body. Because he thinks the body disturbs him and hinders the soul from getting possession of truth and wisdom when body and soul are companions. Is not this the man, Simeus, if anyone, who will get reality? Nothing could be more true, Socrates. Then from all this, Genuine philosophers must come to some such opinion as follows, so as to make 
to one another's statements such as these. A sort of direct path, so to speak, seems to take us to the conclusion that so long as we have the body with us in our inquiry and our soul is mixed up with so great an evil, we shall never attain sufficiently what we desire. And that, we say, is the truth. For the body provides thousands of busy distractions because of its necessary food. Besides, if diseases fall upon us, they hinder us from the pursuit of the real. With loves and desires and fears and all kinds of fancies and much rubbish, it infects us and really and truly makes us, as they say, unable to think one little bit about anything at any time. Indeed, wars and factions and battles all come from the body and its desires and from nothing else. For the desire of getting wealth causes all wars, and we are compelled to desire wealth by the body, being slaves to its culture. Therefore, we have no leisure for philosophy. From all these reasons, chief of all is that if we do have some leisure and turn away from the body to speculate on something in our searches, it is everywhere interfering. It causes confusion and disturbances and dazzles us so that it will not let us see the truth. So in fact, we see that if we are ever to know anything purely, we must get rid of it and examining the real things by the soul alone. And then it seems after we are dead, as the reasoning shows, not while we live, shall we shall possess that which we desire, lovers of which we say we are, namely wisdom. For if it is impossible in company with the body to know anything purely, one thing of two follows. Either knowledge is possible nowhere, or only after death. For then alone the soul will be quite by itself apart from the body, but not before. And while we are alive, we shall be nearest to knowing, as it seems, if as far as possible we have no commerce or communion with the body, which is not absolutely necessary. And if we are not infected with its nature, but keep ourselves pure from it until God himself shall set us free. I didn't understand that sentence. Sorry about that. Oh, what was that mumble? Oh, I just misread that. <coughs> okay. And while we are alive, we shall be nearest to knowing, as it seems, if as far as possible we have no commerce or communion with the body, which is not absolutely necessary. And if we are not infected with its nature, but keep ourselves pure from it until God himself shall set us free. And so, pure and rid of the body's foolishness, we shall probably be in the company of those like ourselves and shall know through our own selves complete and contamination. And that's perhaps the truth. But for the pure, but for the impure to grasp the pure is not, it seems allowed. So we must think Simeus and so we must say to one another, all who are rightly lovers of learning, don't you agree? Assuredly, Socrates. Yes. Then, uh, if this is true, my comrade, there is great hope that when I arrive where I am traveling, there is anywhere no, there, if anywhere, I shall sufficiently possess that for which all our study has been pursued in this past life. So the journey which has been commanded for me is made with good hope, and the same for all other man, for any other man who believes he has got his right mind purified, as I may call it. Certainly. And is not purification really that which has been mentioned so often in our discussion? To separate as far as possible the soul from the body and to accustom it to collect itself together out of the body in every part and to dwell alone by itself as far as it can, both at this present and in the future, being freed from the body as if from a prison. By all means then is not this called death, a freeing and separation of soul from body? Not a doubt of that. But to set it free, as we say, is the chief endeavor of those who rightly love wisdom, nay, of those alone. And the very care and practice of philosophers is nothing 
but the freeing and separation of soul from body. Don't you think so? It appears to be so. Then, as I said at first, it would be absurd for a man preparing himself in this life to be as near as possible to death, so to live, and then, uh, sorry, then as I said at first, it would be absurd for a man preparing himself in this life to be as near as possible to death, so to live, and then when death comes, to object. Of course. Then in fact, Simeus, those who rightly love wisdom are practicing dying, and death to them is the least terrible thing in the world. Look at it in this way. If they are everywhere at enmity with the body and desire the soul to be alone by itself, and if when this very thing happens they shall fear and object, would not that be wholly unreasonable? Should, not, should they not willingly go to a place where there is good hope of finding what they were in love with all through their life and they loved wisdom? and of ridding themselves of the companion which they hated. When human favorites and wives and sons have died, many have been willingly to go down to the grave, drawn by the hope of seeing there are those they used to desire and of being with them. But one who is really in love with wisdom and holds firm to this same hope, that he will find it in the grave and nowhere else worth speaking of, Will he then fret or at dying and not go thither rejoicing? We must surely think, my comrade, that he will go rejoicing if he really is a philosopher. He will truly believe that he will find wisdom in its purity there and there alone. If this is true, would it not be most unreasonable, as I said just now, if such a one feared death? Unreasonable, I do declare. And this is proof enough that if you see a man fretting because he is to die, he was not really a philosopher, but a philo philosoma, not a wisdom lover, but a body lover. And no doubt the same man is money lover and honor lover, one or both. It certainly is so as you say. Then Simeus, does not what is called courage belong especially to persons so disposed as philosophers are. I have no doubt of it. And the same with temperance, what the many call temperance, not to be agitated about desires, but to hold them lightly and decently. Does not this belong to those alone who hold the body lightly and live in philosophy? That must be so. You see, if you will consider the courage and temperance of others, you will think it strange. Uh, how so, Socrates? You know, that everyone else thinks death one of the greatest evils. Indeed, I do. Then is it not fear of greater evils which makes the brave endure death when they do? That is true. Then fear and fearing makes all men brave, except philosophers. Yet it is unreasonable to become brave by fear and cowardice. Uh, yeah, certainly. And what of the decent man? Are they not in the same case? A sort of intemperance makes them temperate. Although we say such a thing is impossible, <coughs> nevertheless, with that self-complacent temperance, they are in a similar case, because they fear to be deprived of other pleasures, and because they desire them, they abstain from some, some because they are mastered by others. They say, of course, intemperance is to be ruled by pleasures. <clears throat> Yet what happens to them is to master some pleasures and to be mastered by others. And this is much the same as what was said just now, that in a way intemperance has made them temperate. So it seems. Oh, bless you, Simmies. This is hardly an honest deal in virtue to trade pleasure for pleasure and pain for pain and fear for fear and even greater for less, as if they were current coin. No, the only honest currency for which all these must be traded is wisdom. And all things are in truth to be bought with this and sold for this. 
and courage and temperance and justice and in short true virtue depend on wisdom whether pleasure and fear and all other such things are added or taken away but when they are deprived of wisdom and exchanged one for another virtue of what kind is that kind. of that kind is no more than a make believe a thing in reality slavish and having no health or truth in it and truth is in reality a cleansing from all such things and temperance and justice and courage and wisdom and self are a means of purification indeed it seems those who established our mystic rites were no fools they in truth spoke with a hidden meaning long ago when they said that whoever is uninitiated and unconsecrated when he comes to the house of Hades will lie in mud but the purified and consecrated when he goes there will dwell with the gods indeed as they say in the rites many are called uh, use the footnote <laughs> sorry uh, wand bearers are many inspired mystics are few and these few are in my opinion no others than those who have loved wisdom in the right way one of these I have tried to be by every effort in all my life and I have left nothing undone according to my ability if I have endeavored in the right way if we have succeeded at all we shall know clearly when we get there very soon if God will as I think this is my defense before you gentlemen on the bench Simis and CDs showing that in leaving you and my masters here I am reasonable in not fretting or being upset because I believe that I shall find there good masters and good comrades so if I am more convincing to you in my defense than I was to the Athenian judges I should be satisfied okay look her structure this idea when Socrates is finished will appear again and again throughout the dialogue right? he's finished what is that man? so uh, why why did he stick that in there in my is my addition it doesn't it wasn't there so therefore you can just rule it out and it's not much significant why did he stick what in there this expression Socrates is finished you didn't need that Plato was being paid by the word at that time. <laughs> oh, with and Socrates therefore he stuck in the words at times just to get more drachmas. <laughs> or, or, it's a mark of a structure. Hey, the work is structured this way. Yeah. And therefore, if he is finished, with what? His defense. Okay. Is sharing. Maybe not his persuasion, though. Okay, all right. So, if you go back to that yoga, the purification is not purification, not which, right? Focus on it. It's a yoga. And truth is in reality a cleansing? No. Page 470, middle of the page. Oh, and, that one. And it's not and purification. Is, and it's not purification, really, that which has been mentioned so often in our discussion. Go ahead. To separate as far as possible the soul from the body and to accustom it to collect itself together out of the body. See, that presupposes that the soul is something that is all over the body. So what is he asking him to do? Pull it all together. <coughs> Out of the body. From every part. As a habit. Right. Habit and a custom, right. And he, he said that we've talked about this so many times before. So it's something they all know.
Okay, look, um, let me take this off because it's not very important. Just clutters up the... <laughs> okay. Let me see if it's okay with we'll that. I asked the wrong person. <laughs> Look here. Some <laughs> things don't make any difference. This does make any difference. Plato is not a good writer, you know. He had to write, he didn't even write in English. He didn't even know English. <laughs> now little kids in my neighborhood learn, they, they know it. And he had to write in Greek. He's learning English. Yeah. Okay, I thought I'd ask. What was your question? I got into that. I was looking at that passage. I didn't hear it. Well, the thing I wanted to take out, I can put it back, but it's not important. It's just why I erased well, it. Well, but you're All right, okay. 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 Uh, of course, we could ask, uh, is there any evidence in what we've been reading that there are different kinds of death being described? Mm -hmm. okay. well, is that possible? Oh, hmm. let me do that again. Oh. Hey, suppose it ends up that there are 2,654 mentioned, different kinds of death. Now that would be a big number, wouldn't it? <laughs> right, and therefore we could admire it, could we not? <laughs> that would be the good reason why he picked that many in the book. <laughs> no? It would be better if there were seven or 14. <laughs> yeah. Those are my two numbers. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Three Suppose there are seven <laughs> kinds of death being mentioned up to this point. Mm. Mm. Would that make any difference to you? Yeah. Why? Because I didn't see it, and I'd like to know. What, what? Because I didn't read it. Yeah, forget that. So I didn't, I'd ah, like to know. Okay. All right, keep it in mind. All right. Those well, would be, be the seven local kinds. What? Well, I was thinking those would be the seven local kinds, because we have seven local yokels in the beginning. Well, that might relate to the myth. Yeah. Oh. Let me do that again. Oh! See, if so, yeah. wait a minute, if so, what would be the other seven? Foreign. Or uh, as opposite from local yokels as. Yes. See, he finished it. It's over. He's finished with something. Has he finished with death? Not the topic. Just, hey, what, whose idea of death? His. His. Philosophy, philosophy. Oh, are you suggesting then, curiously enough, that it would be curious to find that if he is distinguishing seven kinds of death, is it likely equally that the person who's pushing this game in this way might want to include all seven? Yes. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? That one was good. Oh, that was good. Wait, wait, wait. Then what would be the other seven? Um, true non-philosophers. How about that? I like that. There'd be a certain symmetry there, but I have no clue. <laughs> That's a guess. Okay. Shot in the dark. Well, actually, I see, we're back Sim here. See, we're right here. Yeah, Simeus and Sibes. Mm -hmm. They they are. We bring up uh, non-philosophical. Well, he does have the initiated and uninitiated. Those are two kinds. Made a distinction between those initiated and those not. So far, we've got the idea of death. So there are three groups. 
philosopher, non true, right? The true non philosopher. And the one who's totally indifferent, which is Creton. Right. So look here. Then what makes Socrates a philosopher? The practice. Is that what he says? True philosophy is the practice of dying and the state of being dead? Is that right? Well then, uh, could I risk a, a question and say, well then, what keeps the true non-philosophers from playing the game of philosophy? Just thought I'd ask. About? Death. That's right. But what would it be? What would it be? His idea is for separation. Mm -hmm. Finish it. So their idea would be that there is no separation. Right. And that the, when the body dies, the soul dies. Oh, is it possible that each of those particular points might end up being an argument? Mm. It's possible. You mean there's going to be seven classic arguments that are going to define the true non-philosopher? I think you mean that, but I would go along with it and go looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I had it, look here. I had a talk tonight before we got here, thank goodness. Mm. And, um, do you know Yanni, that, the guy who yeah. gets into philosophy? He said, we're not doing much work here. And I agreed with, I always like to agree when people start that way. I just worry about whether they're going to make me work or not. But I always think that it's, it's a good way to begin. <laughs> right. right, Ron? Right. And so he said, uh, it's something that surprised me. He said, well then, why don't we make a point of each person here deciding to master one of the seven arguments and demonstrate it next Friday night? Defend it. Equally well, what would happen if we decided to know all seven of them in the way that you can convert them into a dialogue if the occasion came up to use them. And then if you master all seven, what will you be doing? Well, you're ridding yourself of it. Pardon? You might be ridding yourself of it. Are you saying that these seven have come up already in what you've read? Yes. There's seven, he's finished. He's finished. He's finished with it. Wouldn't it be fun if we could find the seven right there then? He finished his part. Will it not follow, if they're non-philosophers, that they're totally incapable of understanding these seven ideas? Is that likely or not? Because they believe that their seven arguments justify their exclusion from being and pursuing the idea of death as described as purification. Oh, wait a minute. Then, uh, CBs and Simeons, <clears throat> we can test it out. Watch, watch. Um, say, did you find that yoga uh, sir, practice uh, interesting? Um, but it's enough. You don't need anything more, do you? No, Good. I'd like to get a great deal more. Like, what? For instance, I need pull every, from every part of the body. Let me turn it again, okay? Here is Sock. Got a picture of Socrates? There, there he is. And he un. And here it is. 
He gives the yoga of death. It's a death yoga, like Tibetan yoga. It's a death yoga. How to separate the soul from the body, right? Mm -hmm. Would you not agree? They're right. There's no reason why they would have any interest in it. I mean, we don't have any interest in it. We wouldn't ask. Hey, Socrates, have you pulled it off? Uh, is there more you can tell us about this process? Uh, how long did it take you to do it, and under what conditions did you find you could pull it off? Oh, and when you were separated, what was it like being separate? Was there any return? Uh, does it admit of degrees? Uh, is there a better, or a deeper, or more profound way of experiencing whatever this is, separation of soul from the body? And what's so hot about experience of separation? What do you get for it? What's it like? And if you found you could do it more than once, why didn't you do it twice? And if you were to do it again, uh, do you think there's a way of doing it better and uh, more profoundly? These obviously aren't important questions. No, they are. What? Therefore, I want to know, hey, it's the death scene, Socrates is there, and these guys are all sitting around. What did they come up with? Socrates is finished. Okay, just one, one short pause. Okay, let's get back into it. One of my favorite lines in Plato mm -hmm. that so much depends upon. Okay, got it. All of these questions about death and the separation of soul from the body. All right, all right. And Socrates had thus finished. Cebes took up the word. Socrates, on the whole I think you speak well, but about the soul, <laughs> it's a thing which people find very hard to believe. They fear that when it parts from the body, ha, <laughs> it's nowhere anymore. But on the day when a man dies, as it parts from the body, and goes out like a breath or a whiff of smoke. It's dispersed and flies away. It's gone and is nowhere anymore. Hey, if it existed anywhere, gathered itself by itself, Socrates, and rid of the evils which you have just described, that'd be great hope. That really would be great hope. Great and good hope, Socrates. That what you say is true. But this very thing needs no small reassurance and belief that the soul exists when the man dies and that it has some power and sense. Here's the great quote. Okay, what would you be now if you're playing Socrates? You just did this, right? you just explored this. And what does our friend CBs do? Did he dismiss it? Mm -hmm. Hey, you speak well, but about the soul, ha! <laughs> People find it very hard to believe. And then he tells you what, hey, they believe. Got to remember that. What's the first level? They. Popular belief. Okay, here comes the great paragraph. Quite true, said Socrates. Quite true, CBs. Well, what are we to do? Shall we discuss this very question, whether such a thing is likely or not? Hey, what does that mean? What follows are going to be likely arguments. Hey, hmm. oh, well, look here. What does CBs want? Reassurance and faith or belief that the soul exists when the man dies. Hey, there's only one way to, to do it. Here. You want to find out? Do it. Does he have an interest in it? 
What does he want? Prove. Reassurance and belief. Reassurance. He wants belief. Hold Depends my on. hand. Pardon? Hold my hand. Hold, hold my, yeah. Well, there's also, isn't it that he's taken the entire issue of practice or separating the yoga? He doesn't see any of that. It, it appears that he's only applying it to the moment on the day when the man dies. Yeah. It's only, and it, oh, and right. that's all he... That's all he's talking about. That's all. That's right. Absolutely right. But on the day when a man dies, you know what everybody thinks of the man? That's the only time when he thinks the soul can be separated from the body. And he goes out like a Yeah, yeah, yeah. So CVs comes back. For my part, CDs. I should very much like to return to your question about the purification rites <laughs> because I have a deep appreciation for such a yoga and I have found there are few who have knowledge of it but you have been expounding this for many years and know it in greater detail than anyone I have yet known and therefore let us put aside these other questions and continue this exploration of what true philosophy is. Isn't that a good question? Oh, it's great. <laughs> well, no. Right? Was I reading between the lines? <laughs> no. I don't even think it's between the lines. No, he wants Socrates to address his, those questions. Okay, watch his answer. I love his answer. For my part, I should very much like to know what your, your opinion. opinion. <laughs> Not knowledge. See, this will give you knowledge. He says, hey, I want to know your opinion about it. Right. He's such thoughtful, isn't he? What's the Greek? It's doxa. Doxa. Go ahead. Dok doxa. Right. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So, would you agree? That's the first argument. This is the first argument. You see these graves. We now identified the first one. And it's called, formally, for those people who want to make it very formal, it's called death as a whiff. <laughs> okay, hey, wouldn't it be funny if it turns out that they are exactly seven great arguments? And if they believe it, does he believe it? More than that, remember what we said? They both contemplate, they both have their gods mm -hmm. that support them. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to go through that bunch of stuff here and show it. Remember, I took it off the board. Would it be interesting if it turned out that Cebes and Simeas both believe and are members of a group, Thebians, from there? and they happen to represent the mythology of their own people, expressed philosophically? If so, then what is Socrates doing if that's the case? He's challenging major religious myths about death. <clears throat> ah, on the last day of his life, he's taking on the, the religion. That in principle disagree with True philosophy. So, wait a minute. Serious, Alan. There are seven arguments. Now, to show you how willing I'm, <coughs> I am to sacrifice, I thought I'd pick one. So I'll pick the first one, the whiff. And you guys pick the other six. Isn't that fair? Yeah. I think we already did it. Know it. See? Know it. You know why? Because you can use these to understand these issues, and you will always find people who hold them one way or the other. And you can more fully develop their understanding of their own belief, while you might look around for the weakness in it. Therefore, it's a model. This is a model. And by the way, you think he wins or loses? Does he win or lose against them? Huh? He wins. <clears throat> he loses. Oh. 
What was that? Uh, I'm just, who cares? I just thought it was in the book. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Who would answer? Yeah. No, see, that's important. If it turns out that the true philosopher can't finish it, convince, convince. can't rid them of their belief about mm -hmm. what Socrates What Socrates is? With these seven arguments. Practicing with showing them the shallowness of their thinking. But will they give it up? No. It's not a conversion. No conversion of that. And that's why Christianity came into view, because they saw the weakness in Plato and the need for conversion experiments. <laughs> Okay, we got the assignment for next week. Gonna master what? Hey, that's why, look here, that's why you have to go into the myth and the end. Otherwise, you know, we're not going to be able to settle those. <coughs> the myth and the end. And it should really be read together to greater depth with uh, the myth of Earth together. Okay. Vote. Okay, that's unanimous. <laughs> okay. All right. okay. All right. Take a break. And someone put a cold beer in the refrigerator. Oh, yeah. Whoever it was, thank you. Don't get in my way as I run to the kitchen, though. <laughs> what was it for, though? Yes. Oh, yeah. By the way, we have some celebrations. Regina got one. She won a great, may win a great case in court. Yeah. Right? Hope so. And showed her art. And yeah. this, as you can yes. see on page this number one, it's a celebration of the way of the logos that's going to come out within a week or so. Cool. Cool. That great battle from 1988 is concluded. 88? I thought it was earlier. I think it was. I thought it was earlier than that. Okay, you, pr you probably know it. Like I thought it was uh, 1978. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, all I know is it was a great time and it was rejected, but, and now it's going to emerge. Any other celebrations? Come on. Well, the beer is for... That's it. Any kind I'm, of celebration. I like it. I always like it. <laughs> Hold it. That's her birthday. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How many of you have? How many of you have? Uh, I've only had one. Oh, 30, 30. You wow. did? That many reincarnations. Oh, born again. I only born had again. one. Yeah. I only had the first How many of you have? I don't. I don't know. I only had one. The first one. Oh.